Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to divide decimals by decimals. Let's jump into number one, where we have two and 66 hundredths divided by seven tenths. The first thing that we need to do is set this problem up. That way we can go through the division process. Two and 66 hundredths is the dividend, the number we are dividing. It goes under the division bar. Seven tenths is the divisor, the number we are dividing by. It goes on the outside of the division bar. Now, whenever we have a division problem that involves decimals, we always need to check. Is the divisor a whole number? Well, 7 tenths is our divisor. That's not a whole number. So we need to make it a whole number. We can do this by moving the decimal once to the right. That will give us a whole 7. Now, technically, we multiply our divisor by a power of 10. In the case of number 1, that power of 10 was 10, so we multiplied 7 tenths by 10. This shifts the digits of our divisor to the left and gives us a whole number. We made this process simpler to think through by just thinking of this as moving the decimal to make the divisor whole. Now, whatever we do to the outside, the divisor, we must do to the inside, the dividend, in order to keep this problem balanced and equivalent. So we need to multiply the dividend by 10 as well. Let's move this decimal once to the right. Now we can rewrite our new equivalent problem with the whole divisor. So we have 26 and 6 tenths for our dividend, and then 7 for our divisor. So is our divisor now a whole number? Yes, so we can bring our decimal straight up into our answer and now go through the division process. So divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, repeat. Let's start with divide. So we have 2 divided by 7. How many whole groups of 7 in 2? Well, we can't do that, so we need to use the 6 and take a look at 26. We have 26 divided by 7. How many whole groups of 7 in 26? Well, 3. That gets us to 21. Let's put the 3 above the 6 in 26, not above the 2. It needs to go above the 6 since we did 26 divided by 7. Now we multiply. 3 times 7 is 21. Subtract. 26 minus 21 gives us 5. Bring down. Now we have 56 and we repeat. So we go back to divide. We have 56 divided by 7. How many whole groups of 7 in 56? Well, 8. That hits 56 exactly. Multiply. 8 times 7. 56. Subtract. 56 minus 56 is 0. We went all the way over to the right within our dividend as far as bringing digits down, and we have a clean cut 0 at the end, so we are done. Our final answer, 3 and 8 tenths. Let's move on to number 2, where we have 88 and 4 tenths divided by 34 hundredths. Let's set this problem up. We have 88 and 4 tenths divided by 34 hundredths. Is the divisor a whole number? No, 34 hundredths is not a whole number. So let's make it a whole number. Let's move the decimal once and then twice. So now we have a whole 34. Now, technically, we multiplied that divisor by 100. That was the power of 10 that we multiplied the divisor by. So those digits shifted two places to the left in order to give us a whole number. Now, whatever we do to the outside, the divisor, we must do to the inside, the dividend. 
So let's multiply 88 and 4 tenths by 100 as well. Once, twice to the right, we can fill this gap with a zero. Now we can rewrite our equivalent problem with the whole divisor. So we have 8,840 for our dividend, and then 34 for our divisor. Now we're ready to go through the division process. Let's start with divide. So we have eight divided by 34. How many whole groups of 34 in eight? Well, we can't do that. So we need to take a look at the next eight as well and use 88. So we have 88 divided by 34. How many whole groups of 34 in 88? Well, two, that gets us to 68. So put the two above this eight, not the other eight, because again, we used the 88, so the two needs to go above that eight, and then we multiply. Two times 34, 68. Subtract, 88 minus 68, well, eight minus eight is zero, and then eight minus six is two, so we get 20. Bring down, and we have 204. Now we repeat, so we go back to divide we have 204 divided by 34. How many whole groups of 34 in 204? Now for this, we are going to estimate and check in order to figure out how many whole groups of 34 are in 204. So let's come to the side here, and I'm going to use 34 times 10 as a reference point, so a starting point, something to go off of. 34 times 10, is 340. Now 204 is quite a bit lower than 340. So if we know 34 times 10 equals 340, we can base our estimate off of that. So for example, let's try 34 times 7 and see how close to 204 we get. So 34 times 7. 4 times 7, 28. 7 times 3 is 21, plus 2, 23. So 238. So 7 was too many. So let's scale that back and try 34 times 6. 34 times 6. 6 times 4, 24. 6 times 3 is 18, plus 2 is 20. So we get... 204 exactly, so it's going to be 6. Now we multiply, 6 times 34, 204. Subtract, 204 minus 204 is 0. Now that 0 does not mean we are done. We need to go all the way over within our dividend and bring down all the digits. We still have this 0 to bring down. So now we have 0 divided by 34. How many whole groups of 34 in 0? Well, 0. Multiply, 0 times 34, 0. Subtract, 0 minus 0 is 0. Now we went all the way over to the furthest place to the right within our dividend. We have a clean cut 0, so we are done. 260 is our final answer for number two. So there's how we divide decimals by decimals. Let's move on to a couple of practice problems that you can try on your own. Here are your practice problems. I'll give you four minutes and then we will go over the answers. Go ahead and start.
Okay, so that was four minutes. Let's go over the answers. So here are our answers. For number one, we have eight and 28 hundredths divided by six tenths. That equals 13 and eight tenths. For number two, seven and 95 hundredths divided by 53 hundredths equals 15. So there you have it. There's how to divide decimals by decimals. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.